Hey everyone, this is Doug with b and I'm the technical lead on most of b and live video discussion panels, and they usually have a lot of gear and a lot of people who operate that gear to get the job done. But right now, what you're watching is actually being cut, streamed, and recorded right from an iPad. So this little box next to me is called Sling Studio, and really it's what makes all of this possible. I come from a background of a lot of more people and technology involved, and so honestly, I was a little skeptical about this device because I'm used to having control over every little part of the process. So right now in front of me, there's two cameras. They each have something called the camera link on top of them. They're just right on the hot shoe, and they have an HDMI link right into the camera. So basically, that transmits wirelessly over to Sync Studio, and then that wirelessly connects to an iPad, which is where the switching is done. So basically, everything is done all in one. Now, I wanted to see how flexible the system really was because I'm used to having all that control. Surprisingly, you actually can insert graphics, you can insert video, and you can isolate your audio. Now, right off the bat, there's a nice little professional touch on the camera links. There is a tally light, so I know which camera is active every time I look at it based on the light. It's this guy right here the wide. Now probably one of the other important things that I'm looking for in a live streaming setup is the ability to record ISOs or isolated recordings of the different camera angles. And Sync Studio actually can do that. It records all to an SD card. It's right here actually. We're recording both the program feed, which includes all the cuts, and the ISOs. So later on, if we wanted to, we could actually edit this and go right back to the original recordings. Now for this example, we're not streaming the video, we're only recording it. And that's because Sling Studio uses ad hoc Wi-Fi to connect to its devices. That includes the camera links and the iPad. So you don't need a router or an internet connection if you only want to record. If you do want to stream, you can connect this over Wi-Fi to an internet connection or use an add-on to use ethernet. However, this is a streaming device, so if you do intend to stream your video, you can connect to YouTube, Facebook, or use a custom RTMP address, which is usually what we do when we're on the field. Sling Studio itself is controlled via the iPad, so any configuration, camera sources, or the internet connection you use actually has to be done through the iPad. Now I know what you're thinking, it's a wireless device. I'm usually skeptical of things like that myself worried about signal dropouts and distance. So what we decided to do was take it outside and treat it kind of as a director's monitor in a mock shoot. So let's go check it out and see the results. For this test, I wanted to see just how far I could use Sling Studio. It's a little bit of an unorthodox setup, but with a single camera, we place the camera link on top and set up the shot. There's an optional external battery you can attach to the bottom of the unit, which is good for outdoor situations like this. Here I am helping the talent convey the brooding protagonist. A quick check showed that the camera link was already still synced to Sling Studio, meaning I could open the existing project. Now since this is just a single camera setup, it won't hurt to full screen the program feed. Anyway, off I go. At just over two blocks distance, the video does freeze and eventually drops out. Two blocks though is just a bit unrealistic. After walking up halfway to about one blocks distance, the signal picked back up and recording resumed without having to manually reconnect. Just so you understand the kind of distance we're talking about here, not to mention all the potential interference from good old Midtown Manhattan, being able to get even this far is surprising and means in a controlled environment, the signal should be extremely reliable. Let's head back to the studio. All right, and I'm back. So would I use Sling Studio as a production monitor outside? Probably not, but I was genuinely surprised at how capable the main unit and the app really were. If you've ever streamed multiple cameras before, you'll know that even to get just two extra cameras involved requires a lot more cabling and gear. One extra feature I didn't mention earlier was that you can actually use a smartphone as an extra video source. And this kind of opens the door if you want to do more mobile productions where you're on the floor running and gunning. It's a really nice feature to have. Now, while I was able to get about one city block away from the camera link, I'm very curious what would happen if I situated the primary Sling Studio hub between the camera link and the iPad. In a real world situation, in a studio indoors, you'd probably have no connectivity issues whatsoever. We used audio following video via embedded HDMI audio, and that had a slight delay to it that we had to fix in post. Sling Studio does actually have a way to fix audio delay, but it's only available with a line in connection, not on the HDMI audio. Additionally, the preview feeds would sometimes stutter on the app, but they never affected the recorded streams. Personally, I see Sling Studio as a fantastic option if you want to get started in multi-camera streaming, because you don't have to think about setting up an entire studio. Its biggest 
strength is that it can record ISO recordings of each camera angle along with the program feed. And honestly, that's something I didn't expect to see here. So it's really appreciated. Anyway, this is Doug for B&H. I'll see you next time.